Hello, I'm Michael Finn, Holistic Exercise and Lifestyle Coach, and today I'm going to talk about how to eliminate and reduce knee, ankle, foot, and even hip pain and even low back pain too, but we're going to focus on knee, ankle, and feet. Alright, that's going to be the key. So, we're going to start off with daily things, and when I say daily, I mean at least five days a week, six or seven is even better, but at least five days a week. We want to start off with mobilization. So I've got a lacrosse ball down here on the ground. Um, they have massage balls that are a little bit softer too, but I like a lacrosse ball. They're inexpensive, they're easy to get, just there on Amazon. And so we want to like put the hand on a wall or a piece of furniture, something to stabilize us. We'll stand on one foot and on the other foot, we're going to put that on top of the lacrosse ball. And we're going to roll the lacrosse ball all around the foot and find sore spots. All right? so. We need to have mobility in our feet. So I will also say, the more you can train and exercise and live in bare feet, or like I've got socks on my feet, having socks on, the more you can be out of shoes, the better. Walking on the beach, walking on rocks, whatever you can do, um, even in the grass or anything else, the more you can be barefoot, the better off you're gonna be. I'll just tell you that right now. So, but rolling out the bottom of the foot, if you find sore spots, it's kind of like hang there for a good 10 seconds. Let that sore spot get a little less sore and then move on. Hit other spots, get under, you know, the base of every toe, all along the ball of the foot, all along the arch. Go way on the inside like this. You gotta like turn your knee in a little bit. Also help with the balance on the other leg because you can use this leg to support. And get all around your heel and do all of that and look around for any sore spots. And then once you do that foot, then you can do the other foot. So, and moving around that way in all sorts of different angles and finding all around the foot, okay? So that's mobilization number one. So that is first. We always wanna mobilize everything as much as we can before we start stretching things. So then we can stretch things. And I like to do a little bit of a stretch relax as well as contract activity to where we end up building strength as well as flexibility into the muscles. So I've got a bigger step up here so that I tend to like to use it this way. Sometimes I use this other step here in front of me, but any kind of step where you can stand up on top of the step and then I'm going to do it the closer one to the camera. So I'm going to hang my left heel off the back of the step so that my left ball of my foot is up on the step but my left heel is hanging off so that I'm like sinking my weight down into that left heel and once again I'm using something for balance. I've got my hand on the wall so that I'm really comfortable and I can put a lot of weight into that left heel and try to sink that left heel down towards the floor. And then from there I'm going to push through the ball of my left foot and go all the way up on my toes. And then I'm going to sink all the way back down into that stretch, taking my left heel all the way down to the floor. Okay, pushing through the ball of my foot and sinking all the way back down into that stretch. And I'll do that like five times on this side. So there's three, four, and then five. All right, and then I'll switch to the other foot. Sinking all the way down to that stretch, getting a good stretch, and then I'll contract through the ball of the foot all the way up, and then I'll sink all the way down into that stretch, and then I'll push all the way up onto the ball of the foot. There's two, sinking all the way down, and push, there's three, and then push, there's four, and one more push for five. Now you can do a little bit more, it's perfectly fine, but I'm just going to do like five today. So, because i got a lot of different things I'm trying to show you guys. And if you hang around to the end of the video, i got a little special for you too. So, then we want to do it with a bent knee. So, when we did it with a straight leg, keeping that leg straight, it stretches out the bigger gastric muscle. Now we want to do the smaller little soleus muscle. So, we want to bend the knee a little bit, to where now when you're down at the bottom, you're going to feel that stretch more in the Achilles tendon area. So, more right just above the heel. So I'm going to get back into there. So now I'm going to hang that left heel off. I'm going to sink that heel down towards the floor, keeping the knee bent. So I get that stretch in the Achilles tendon. And then I'm going to keep that knee bent, and I'm going to push with the ball of the foot and come all the way up. And then I'm going to sink all the way back down into the stretch. I'm going to push through the ball of the foot coming up. I'm going to sink back down into that stretch. And I'll do like five for a few more. 
of these on this side. Okay, there's four, that's enough for right now. And then I'll switch over to the right foot, hanging that right heel down, the knees bent, pushing through the ball of the foot, coming all the way up, and then sinking all the way down into that stretch, and then pushing all the way up, and then sinking all the way down into the stretch, and then pushing all the way up, and then sinking all the way down into the stretch. All right? So that we can get lots of different stretches. Now, you might even feel that there's resistance in particular areas. So, like you might feel that maybe when you drop all the way down to the stretch, your foot wants to roll in. You can spend extra time on trying to sink all the way down to the stretch and roll your foot out. Because maybe it's tight over there, so that you stick your left hip out a little bit and help to roll that foot out a little bit and work into that area and then push out of that and then sink down to the stretch. So be aware of your body and feel your body and feel where it doesn't want to go. And that's where you want to try to get it to go. Okay, don't force it, just let it go there and then push out of it. Get the nervous system going, build the strength, and then go there and then push through that foot and build the strength. And then do the same thing on the other side, find if there's a spot. See, this side doesn't really like to go to the outside either. So, and I'll just kind of push through there and work it that way as well. So that you end up stretching all of that out. Now. There's another way we can do this too. So I'm going to move this step really quick. So if you have a curb, so like if you're out and about, maybe you're out running or things like that, and you have like a curb, you can put your toes up on the curb and you can have your heel down on the ground and you can push your knee forward and you can move your knee left and right and find if there's any tight spots there. Like I always have a little tight spot when I take my knee in, when I've got my toes up on the curb and my heel down on the ground, and then pushing that knee forward. You can also take your whole hips forward and see if you have any tension that way, but I don't really ever feel anything that way. So, but pushing the knee forward that way works and then doing the other foot as well so that you can use a little curb, toes up there, driving that knee forward as well as moving the knee a little bit left to the right to where you're going to feel more of a stretch down in that Achilles tendon. Okay, So those are real easy ways to quickly stretch out the feet and easily. And once again, good thing to do daily so that we open up and we mobilize the feet. All right, so now on, we want to build some more function and some more stability in the feet too. So like I said, when we exercise or work out or anything like that, the more often you can be barefoot or in socks or something like that, the better. So when you're squatting, you can be barefoot and you know move your feet around, have your toes you know, moving around and things like that. So starting with stationary exercises is great, but you're moving over the top of your feet and that's changing things. Whether you are doing, say, a squat like that, or whether you're doing a lunging position like this and doing a stationary lunge, um, or a lateral stationary lunge with your foot up on a step like this. Okay, all these things are good lateral things and they develop a lot of the muscles around in our lower legs too, while we're developing our bigger muscles around our hips and our knees and our backs and everything else. So all very important. So then another thing that's great to throw into the mix is movement with it. And so starting soft. So where um, like easy dancing is great where you're just stepping side to side, forward, backward, moving around, but we can do it with activities too. So we could do a lateral stepping lunge and dropping down into our lunge and then pushing back out and then the other way and pushing back out and going back and forth and this way we get loading of the foot and pushing off of the foot and loading of the foot and pushing off the foot and this is power but it's power at a very low level so that it's not very hard. I always pick things that don't cause pain when you're doing them, okay? Muscle soreness the next day is not a problem but pain while you're doing them is not good, okay? So that we can do some little power motions there that are nice and simple and easy so that we've developed all that. And you could do 
a easy shallow front stepping lunge, easy shallow front stepping lunge. We can do some round back behind us stepping lunges. Okay, I have lots of videos on other exercises on like stepping lunge activities. I take those up to like big reaching up over the head and stepping up to the side and touching the foot. Okay, so that you can add more to it, get more stretching, more motion into all of the muscles throughout your foot, your lower leg, your knees, your hips, your back, everything. Okay, so very cool there. So once you've spent a good two or three, maybe even four weeks there, then you can start adding in some unstable surfaces. If you have like a beach nearby, great to be spending time in the sand once again, walking, moving around, exercising. But I have like this squishy balance beam kind of thing. And I'm standing on this. And now I can do my squats up here and the, it wants to move underneath me. So that's making things more challenging that way. I could do it to where one foot is on the beam and the other one is not. Now when you do things like that, that are uneven like this, listen to your body. Okay, this hip's gonna hit the bottom before that one. So my left hip's on the, on the beam and my right foot's on the floor, so my left hip wants to stop before my right one. So when my left hip wants to stop, I need to stop, okay? But still, we're not always in a perfectly flat world, especially for those of us that play sports. And so we need to exercise sometimes away from being on a flat surface. So with once a week, I will throw unstable and unlevel exercises into the program. So that's the way you can do it with like a so squishy thing. I've got all sorts of wedges. So I could go heels up on the wedges and I could do some squats. I could go toes up on the wedges and do some squats. All right, or same kind of thing with lunges. Um, I could do a lunge with my foot up on the wedge and do lunging that way. So there's so many different things that you can play around with. You can even go sideways on the wedge and do a lunge with your foot sideways so that one side of your foot is higher than the other side so that you have to counter all those things. So once a week, I'll play around with after a mat, after you got really good at all the first stuff that I said, then you can play around with all the different variations of levels. And then let me bring in another toy. Then we have a bozu, and I'm not gonna do the crazy stuff on the flat side. We'll see how well my socks stick. They're not gonna stick very well. And it needs a little bit of air. So, but then we can be up on a bozu that's really squishy. I'm all over the place, woo! Okay, and so with that, we can develop some more muscles in our feet, standing up on the bozu. You can even be doing some of that stepping off and stepping on. You can step onto the bozu and do a lateral lunge. Step onto the bozu, do a lateral lunge. You can step over the bozu and do a lateral lunge. So same thing with front back squats. All right, so that one or two days out of the week, you spend a little time doing some unstable ground underneath your feet so that you really develop your feet and your knees. So like even right now, everything's all warmed up really good. Okay. So now we've been doing all this stuff for a good one to two months. Now we can introduce more power into our activity. And I'm going to just keep this really small and really simple. If you want to get more into power and foot development, look into my speed and strength program online. I get much more into big explosive power and developing the tendons in your feet and your ankles and all that kind of good stuff. So, um, so with this, we want to do like mini jumping. So something kind of like a jump rope is really good. And I don't have a jump rope. It's my invisible jump rope. But you can start really small by just doing little jumps like that. Change up the angle. You can do little jumps 
side to side. You can do little jumps forward to backwards. You can split your feet and you can do little jumps splitting your feet one way, other way, one way, other way, one way, other way. Um, you can do little rotational jumps and just real small, nothing big. Sometimes I'll just put a little stick on the floor, like a paint stick on the floor, and just have people bounce from one side of it to the other so that you get used to that power motion of your feet accepting the ground and then pushing off of the ground and going over to the other side, okay? So those are all the ways that we can work our feet, and that's gonna improve the function of our knees and our ankles and our hips because all of that's gonna get developed too. We can't separate one thing out from the other. But start with mobilization with the ball. As we get the ball back over here, start with our mobilization with the ball. Work on your stretching. Work on exercising with no foot support. We're born without things on our feet. We're supposed to function without things on our feet. Now, if you're gonna be outside, you need to protect your feet if you got sharp objects and all that kind of stuff. But for the most part, um, that's why I train barefoot most of the time. Um, we want to develop all of that. Then after you've spent a good two to four weeks working on that, then start going to some unstable surfaces, as well as with your stepping exercises, just stepping out, stepping out, so that one foot's always staying on the ground. And then three to four weeks after that, then you can start getting into your light jumping activities and that sort of thing. Okay, so that you can just kind of expand that out. Now, a little special here on the end. If you like this video, click the like button and please subscribe. But on top of that, if you do like the video and you subscribe and you would like to have a program put together for you, you reach out to me, prove that you have liked and subscribed, and I will give you 50% off your program design with Fin Fitness and Wellness. That's F-I-N-N-F-I-T dot com. That's FinFit.com. You can find me there. You can email me at Michael at FinFit.com and let me know and I'll give you 50% off a program design just for you. All right? So like, subscribe, ring the little bell, have lots of fun, play around, work on those feet, getting your feet, your ankles, your knees, and your hips really, really healthy. And I look forward to seeing all of you in the next video. Have a happy and healthy day.